Kevin and Diane, thank you very much for sitting down with us. Number one, what stunned you the most about this report, Diane? Well, Andy, going through the special grand jury report, uh, it was very thorough. Uh, and one of the things that jumped out to me was the fact that there were missing files, uh, disciplinary files for the shooter, um, as well as reading that the second bullet in the gun had jammed. Uh, I found that to be quite alarming uh, to think about what could have been that day. Could have been even more tragic than what we already saw. Yeah, recommendation number nine. There should be continuing investigation into the missing files and documents to determine if Dr. Parrott and or other parties should be charged with obstruction of justice. Why do you think that should happen? When you read the special grand jury report, they clearly lay out the testimony uh, regarding the questions about the missing records. And to date, those, those questions haven't been answered. Um, so there's certainly more investigation that should be done into these records. It's interesting that the records that were missing were the records of the shooter only. Kevin, what do you want to add to that? Yeah, I think it's, uh, as Diane pointed out, the fact that the records that are missing, we know are the records of the student at issue, calls into question what happened in the three weeks between the shooting and the police serving their search warrant. Who had access to those files? Why were those files at the home of an employee of the school board who directed her to take the files? All these are questions that hopefully in, in a further continuing investigation, the special grand jury can get answers to. Are you guys alleging cover-up? I think the cover-up is evident in the special grand jury's report. And what we allege within our case will ultimately be revealed throughout the facts and discovery in our, in our own case, in the civil case. But what's critically important is that in the first day or 48 hours or 72 hours after an incident like this, there is a volume of information that should be maintained and kept so that investigations like this can be full, complete, and transparent. And that doesn't seem to have taken place. What did you not know about this case that you learned from this special grand jury report? Kevin? The, uh, the absence of a full-time SRO at, at the school, at each school, is, is shocking to me. I, I think that uh, the circumstances of, of this case uh, demonstrate that there is a need for school boards to make the safety of their students and teachers a priority. And that priority starts with having somebody on campus at all times who has that as their number one objective. Diane? And I would agree with that. And in addition, just reading the special grand jury report, and it lays out that the, the buzzer at the door wasn't working. There was a police that were there that waited one full minute before they could access the premises. Um, there were certainly security issues that day. Um, and just to learn about the lack of the students or the teachers um, being trained in how to deal with these emergencies. With your case and the criminal cases, how does what the special grand jury did set a new precedent on who is held responsible? In, I think, so we're laying, we're going over new ground here. Right. And right. This is going to change things. It is. About holding people responsible. Right. I think, I think yes. the uh, precedent isn't established in, in one necessary circumstance. We don't have a pattern of administrators being held responsible, but it begs the question of whether we should. And under the facts and circumstances of this case, it seems as though there were clear and obvious acts that should have been taken that could have prevented the shooting of Ms. Warner and could have prevented the danger that was presented to other students. And if the special grand jury believes in this case or in other cases that an administrator should be held accountable criminally or civilly, then that's, that's the full extent of the law as they see it and we're not going to step in their way. Diane, what did you find most appalling about the eight counts of felony child abuse at the core? The fact that just thinking about the children that were in the building and reading about the fact that the gun jammed and how many other people could have been harmed that day. And if the administrator had just called the police the first, the second, or even the third time, all of that could have been avoided. The, the gun jamming with seven bullets left in the magazine is a shocking fact that I don't know that you can get over, I can't get over it. 
Did you all know that from the start? I did not. I didn't know that it The jammed. one bullet was fired, and there were seven still there. Right. And when did right. you first hear about that? So I knew there had been some bullets in the magazine, but I did not know that the gun had jammed, that obviously the student tried to pull the trigger again. Right. That if it right. had not jammed. Right. right. So that was very alarming. The report revealed that, Ms. As, as you've read, Ms. Werner um, made her way to the principal's doorsteps. I'll mm -hmm. come to that in just a second. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'll come to that right now. Yes. Is that's my next question? Is that where? Okay, let's talk Good. about the main office. What was going on there? Right. That Zwerner goes in there for help, and they close the doors. Talk to me about that environment. And we've spoken to some of those involved here. That the environment of that, mm -hmm. that they heard about gunshots, and they went in their offices, and they closed the doors, as if some would argue that they did not want to get harmed, while others remained in the lobby office. A boy uh, shuffled mm -hmm. in between a copier and a wall. Mm -hmm. uh, the, what's, right. what's interesting to me is that we have a report that reveals that they didn't follow their obligations to, to perform their tests, to perform their lockdown procedures for the entire calendar school year leading up to that point. And so it should not shock us that in a moment of crisis, that the two people who should be most prepared to address it, the principal and the assistant principal, having not gone through the appropriate exercises, either didn't know what to do or, uh, or were in a state of, 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 of self-preservation, which is understandable under certain circumstances, but it's shocking when you, reveal, when you read it. Page nine, the receptionist, confused by the lack of information and lack of direction, found her composure and called 911 and locked down over the PA system. The small boy started crying, to which the grandmother, neither employed by the second school or trained in lockdown procedures, jumped into action. Right. Just reading that is makes it so much more real to understand how everyone must have been feeling that day and just the lack of any type of training to know how to handle that and just the, the part that Kevin talked about with the boy having to get in between the copier and the wall to hide. The receptionist, confused by the lack of information and lack of direction, found her composure and called 911 and locked down over the PA system. Mm -hmm. No direction. No direction. Kevin. No direction. And, and that, that's a systemic failure. When, when there is a circumstance that these individuals should be trained to, to provide guidance and assistance to, and a voice that hopefully the teachers are hoping to hear over the intercom, and that's not the voice that they hear, that, that's evidence of a systemic failure, and we think that that is evidence that is, is directly at point in our case, not just the criminal proceedings. Now, we talked about recommendation number nine, continuing investigation into missing files and uh, possible obstruction of justice. Anything else you want to add to that? Do you consider that to be one of the big highlights of this special report? Yes, definitely. I think that, as the special grand jury says, it suggests a possible cover-up. And you had been uh, alleging that pretty much from the start, that there was uh, this cover-up, they're missing files, etc. Yes. Did this kind of bear out everything that you thought was going on? It did. It did. It was certainly things were in that that I felt existed and to see that the special grand jury was able to investigate this over the last year and try to get to the bottom of this um, is great. I think the special grand jury did an excellent job. Um, I commend them and the Commonwealth Attorney Howard and the prosecutors that helped and assisted in the special grand jury. Um, this was something that I think was necessary for the Newport News community. My colleague Michelle Wolf. Mm -hmm. Very one of our very fine reporters. She has a, a, a question. Uh, in talking to Abby about that day, where was Parker after the boy fired the gun? Did she ever have contact Abby with Abby in the minutes, hours, days that followed? No, she did not. What do you want to say about that? As far as I know, she did not have any contact or reach out to Abby um, after she was shot. So. And what was the contact she had while it was going on? She was in her office, and Abby had basically passed out in the lobby office. Yes, correct. Abby made it right to the office. It's a miracle. She went from her classroom, made it all the way down to the office um, before passing out. 
Um, at what point did she finally come to? She did not really come to. She has memories of being in the ambulance, being transported from the school to the hospital. Um, but there's bits and pieces that she can recall. But it's definitely very, very blurry when she gets to the office. She remembers being very focused on getting to the office. We've covered help. a lot of ground in a very short period of time. Is there anything you want to add that you think is really important for people to know about this in addition to what we've already discussed? There's a pattern of lack of action. Yeah. Okay, I would, pattern of lack of action. Yes. I well, would, I think that isn't that in the office? It is. There's definitely a, 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 definitely a pattern of um, lack of action, and you can see that throughout the entire special grand jury report from the beginning to the end, um, leading up to January 6th, on January 6th, and immediately after that. To the best of your knowledge, with everyone that's filed a lawsuit in this case, uh, do you think they are legitimate claims? I'm not going to comment on the other lawsuits that have been filed. Um, my focus is on Abby's lawsuit and getting justice for her. Give us an update of where she is right now. How's she doing? So Abby has her good days and bad days. Um, I would tell you that sometimes she's on a roller coaster of emotions. When I talked to her yesterday and texted earlier today, she's encouraged by the criminal justice system and how they are not letting this go. Um, so that's encouraging. But at the same time, she is frustrated at the school board just fighting us at every turn. So it, it's it's. A roller coaster for her in some days. You know, it's definitely she's trying to keep her head up and do the best that she can, but every day is different. Kevin, last thoughts. I think there's more to come. And I think the special, What do you mean more to come? Please tell. I think the the special grand jury's uh, request to continue an investigation into the obstruction of justice suggests that there's more information that we may find in the future. I think in our case, we're still early on in the discovery process and hoping that we can get into the room and take depositions of these individuals and get answers directly uh, for Abby ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so while this is a, a great piece of information, and, and as Diane said, we're incredibly grateful, and I know Abby's incredibly grateful for the work of the special grand jury to find answers, there's still a lot of questions left unanswered, and uh, it's our job to go out and get those. Were you surprised by anything else that you saw in this report, Diane? As I was reading it, unfortunately, I don't think I was surprised, but to read it in print, it was surprising to see how just lack of training, how nobody was prepared that day, and to see how the principal and assistant principal responded in the office. Just a lot of it was hard to read. You're not prepared, but is that really, I mean, just common sense about protecting other people? It is, and one thing the special grand jury report said that I've been maintaining this entire time, this was an avoidable event, and that's the conclusion that the special grand jury came to as well. Um, this could have been avoided, and that shock never goes away as you read it, that none of this should have happened.